One of the big issues in this presidential election is going to be January 6th. It's in the news now, and I think it's going to get become bigger and bigger and bigger. So question for Destiny first. Did Donald Trump incite an insurrection on January 6th, 2021? Absolutely. Uh, this is probably ignoring every other issue we've talked about, of which I think there are plenty that I would say disqualify Trump from holding office. Um, I think that the conduct and the behavior leading up to and including January 6th, I think is wildly indefensible. I am excited to see Ben <laughs> try to, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the three to four stages are the, um, the taking what I think any reasonable person would say, knowingly false information about elections being rigged or ballot boxes being stuffed or Ruby Freeman, you know, running ballots three times in Georgia, taking that knowingly false information and trying to call uh, state secretaries and stuff to, to have them flip their electoral vote. That was horrible. Um, the plot that Eastman hatched in order to have these like false slates of electors where all seven states had citizens go in and falsely say that they were the duly elected uh, electors that could submit votes to Congress. That was insane. Uh, that happened. Um, asking or begging Pence to accept these false states of electors initially, and then just say, you should just throw it out completely and throw it to the uh, House delegation, which was majority Republican. That was absolutely unbelievable. And then on the day of January 6th, trying to capitalize on the violence by him, Giuliani, and Eastman making phone calls to senators and congressmen saying, well, don't you think maybe you guys should delay the vote a little bit? You know, don't you think they're just really mad about the election? I think he said to McCarthy, they're more upset than you. Um, and, and his utter dereliction of duty and not doing anything to uh, stop the, the rioting that happened on January 6th because he was too busy taking advantage of it. I think all of these things are horrible. Uh, I look forward to seeing the... Uh, Jack Smith indictments play out in court, uh, maybe even the Georgia Rico case. But um, yeah, I think all of these things are un unfathomable. And I think when you look at the plot from start to finish, clearly the goal the entire time was to circumvent the peaceful transfer of power. That was the goal from start to finish, whether it was through false claims, whether it was through illegal schemes, or whether it was through violence at the Capitol to delay the certification of the vote. Ben? <laughs> So I'm glad you're excited. It's always fun. Uh, uh -huh. So um, th there are two elements to incitement of insurrection. One is incitement. The other is insurrection. Uh, so incitement has a legal standard. So does insurrection. Neither of those standards are met. So if you're asking me, morally speaking, did Donald Trump do the right thing between November 4th and January 6th? I said, I will continue to say no, he did not. I think he was saying things that are false. Uh, with just factually false about his theories with regard to the election, about the election being stolen, about fraud. This is all adjudicated in court. He did not even bring many of the claims that he has brought publicly and all the rest of that. If we're talking about incitement of insurrection as a legal standard, it doesn't meet any of those standards. When it comes to incitement, it has to be immediate law, incitement to immediate lawless action. That's the standard for incitement. And I'm very meticulous in how I use this because I happen to speak publicly a lot. And that means there are lots of people who listen to me, which means some of those people are probably crazy. And some of them may go and do a crazy thing. Did I incite them? The media tends to use the word incitement very loosely with regard to this sort of stuff in the same way that Bernie Sanders, quote unquote, incited the congressional baseball shooting. He did not. Ber Bernie Sanders has a lot of things I disagree with. I think Bernie's a schmuck. It doesn't matter. He did not incite that. So saying bad things is not the same thing as inciting violence. Inciting violence, the legal standard in the United States is, I want you to go punch that guy in the face. That's that's inciting. Uh, with regard to insurrection, typically in insurrection, and there are some descriptions in case law, though none in statutory law, as far as I'm aware, the typical description in case law is the replacement of one legitimate government of the United States with another by violent means. The, the notion that Donald Trump coordinated any such insurrection is belied by the FBI itself. The FBI put out a report in, uh, I believe it was August of 2021, suggesting that there was no well-coordinated insurrectionist attempt coordinated by the White House. Uh, in fact, what you had was Donald Trump thrashing around like that weird alien in uh, the movie Life. I don't know if you ever saw it with Jake Gyllenhaal, where he's like kind of thrashing up against this glass box, just an alien just thrashing up against the glass wow. box. Uh, that, 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 I think, is, is more what you were seeing from November 4th to January 6th. Um, and then, again, the claim that January 6th itself was an insurrection. So virtually, I'm not aware that anyone was charged with actual insurrection. There were some people who were charged with seditious conspiracy. There are insurrection statutes that do exist. No one was charged under those particular statutes. Um, you know, the, there were some people who you could say informally had insurrectionist ideas. Those would be the people who wanted to hang Nancy Pelosi or kill Mike Pence. And those people are in jail right now. Uh, and the election went forward the election was certified. Mike Pence presided over the certification. Mitch McConnell presided over the certification. Joe Biden has been the president for the last 
three years. So the Donald Trump, by the way, was still president at that point. If he had actively wanted to do what other people who have actually launched coups have done, he would have theoretically called the National Guard not to put down the riot, but to actually depose the the sitting government of the United States in the name of a specious legal theory. He did not do that. He did not attempt that. Nobody working for him did that. The the most you can say, I think, about what everybody was doing is that, you know, and I, I want to say everybody. We, we can talk about Trump because this is really about Trump. He used a phrase that, that Trump was disseminating knowingly false information. The word that's carrying a lot of weight there is the word knowingly. Um, so knowingly implies a nowhere. Do I think the information he was disseminating was false? Yes. Do I think that Donald Trump has a unique capacity to convince himself of nearly anything that is to his own benefit? Absolutely. And I think that that's actually what Donald Trump was doing there. And the evidence of that is Donald Trump being a human and all of us watching him for the last several years. Uh, so, you know, the, the idea that that he knew it to be false, I'm not even sure those standards apply in any, like, and just assessing him as a human, which is really what we're being asked to do because there's an intent element to, to this crime. You know, d- does Donald Trump, do you think that today Donald Trump knows that he lost the election? Absolutely. So I- I don't actually. <laughs> I think but that- when we, so I'm glad that you have the attorney background. When we are assessing mens rea, when we're looking at certain criminal statutes where intent is required, it's a reasonable person standard, right? Like, uh, would a reasonable well, person have known that they were? Uh, no, it depends on the mens rea standard. So it, it, it's not the same in every case. If you have to establish individual intent, mm-hmm. then it's not enough to say a reasonable person should have known. That would be enough for a negligence statute. Usually, sure, when you're for- talking about reasonable people, person statutes, just legally speaking, mm-hmm. a reasonable person statute is. Should a reasonable person have known? That's when you get to like manslaughter. Sure. You can't do a reasonable person standard on like first degree murder. So for, you have to establish actual motive in first degree murder. But for first degree murder, you don't need the statement of I plan to kill this person or I intend to kill this person. We can no. prove that state of mind. You, no, you need, a, you, need a, you need circumstantial evidence. Right? Correct. Yes, yeah. sure. You could prove it. So I feel like my, my feeling for Donald Trump was there were all these people around him that he trusted to investigate election fraud. He trusted Barr and the DOJ. He asked Pence, uh, his vice president, to look into it. He asked his chief of staff. He asked his legal counsel. There's so many people that uh, ostensibly right, he trusts them if he's asking them to look into it. And when all of them looked into it and reported back to him, no, we found nothing. What and unless we're going to literally make the concession that Trump might actually be a delusional psycho man, at that point, should he not have realized, like, well, okay, maybe that's not a thing he should have realized the day of the election that he lost the election, but that's not, but that, that's sure, but not I'm just the asking, question. I'm saying that, like, at that point, should he not have known that for him to go and, and propagate those claims that he'd asked all of the people he trusted to research and then for him to take those claims to uh, Michigan and to Georgia and then publicly and to try to convince people to to throw out the election, you don't think that- But you're doing the same thing. You're reverting to, should a reasonable person have known? Yes, a reasonable person should have known. Did Donald Trump know? That's that's a, that's a different that's a different question, and so conflating those two questions is going to get you into some messy territory. By the way, this is why Jack Smith charged the way Jack Smith charged. Yeah, which was right, Jack Smith did not charge conspiracy. Jack Smith did not charge insurrection. He did not charge seditious conspiracy. Mm-hmm. Right? If he, it, it, the but reason is because Jack, Smith, he's, though, Jack think... Smith is a good lawyer. What he's doing is he's actually broadly, I would say, pretty obviously expanding statutory coverage in weird areas in order to cover a thing that doesn't quite fit into any of these legal categories. But the point that I'm making is that Jack Smith is on my side of this. He doesn't think that he can actually establish the intent necessary to convict under a seditious conspiracy or or an insurrection. I agree with that. But I think a lot of the underlying facts, though, because he does bring up those calls to uh, Raffensperger in Georgia, he does bring up in the indictments that that they were knowingly false information. So it seems like that's going to be part of the case, maybe not to convict on any of the four particular charges that he mentioned, but it seems like that's probably going to be part of... um, what he's going to have to establish in court to convict Trump. So yeah. I, I want to look at the actual text of the charges. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I'm sorry that I don't have them memorized. I believe one's a fraud charge that generally does not apply to cases like this. Generally, the fraud charge is like you're trying to steal money from the government. Uh, sure, fraud has it, been used like pretty a, broadly in the past, though. It doesn't have to just be because um, Smith has done oral arguments in response to a lot of the claims by Trump's lawyers. This was one of them. The infinite civil and criminal immunity was another one of them where he cites past cases where these types of things, because I think it was to defraud of civil rights, I think was the fourth charge. Right. So the, the defraud of civil rights is usually somebody standing in the actual like voting house door and preventing you from voting, mm-hmm. not you have a specious legal theory that you espouse in court about whether those votes should be thrown out. Sure. Um, yeah, Although that, I don't like the, when we say specious legal theory and novel uh, application, which I do agree some of these in some ways is novel. I don't think we've ever also had a president try to do this before. It is a novel situation where well, somebody I mean, has resisted the peaceful transfer of power this clearly well, it, it, in some be, different ways. Well, if you're talking about the legal cases, that, I mean, that's not true, but Gore, Gore sued in 2000. I mean, that, so that, so like if well, we're talking about the legal cases, comparable right? to Gore, if this was comparable to Gore, then I'm not saying it's comparable to Gore. I'm saying that if the idea is that espousing a legal theory in court amounts to de facto well, some form of election Gore, 
denial or interference in some way that that can't that that's not as a general principle it's over inclusive sure gore wasn't trying to decertify the vote though for states right they challenged their thing to the supreme court they lost their case in the supreme court and then power transfer happened right after. and and donald trump had a bunch of legal challenges and then he had a rally and then there was a riot and then he left power yeah but the, but the eastman theory of what pence could do in congress is a far cry a away a truly from, shitty theory i mean make no mistake it's a but really not just shitty theory. i think that if any democrat had done this i i think that i feel like we'd be looking at it in a far different lens as in, we would be using terms like attempted coup, subversion of peaceful transfer of power. If um, if, a, if a Democrat vice president had tried to essentially say that in uh, Congress, they could throw away the vote. So uh, I think what I want to get to here, actually, so mm -hmm. we can be more specific, sure. is why are these terms important? We agree on, largely speaking, what happened. Mm -hmm. I think the, the the characterization of the term, are we... Are we we keep kind of bouncing around between two sure. different different categories, we and I want to make sure we can dump the, are we the are, legal stuff. Okay, actually, okay. So we're just we're talking, not looking fine, at insight because, like fine, you said, Jack, Jack Smith, nobody's charging with incitement, right. and I don't believe insurrection is um, a part of that. So we don't mean legal. I just in terms of like a president that is trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power. So whether you call that a bloodless coup or a coup or uh, wh whatever contemporaneous term you want to use, right? So prevent the peaceful transfer of power yes. with all means or using means that are inappropriate, not quite the same thing. Using means, means that means are that, inappropriate or illegal. Okay. Inappropriate. Okay, so illegal. I don't think so. Okay. I don't. I don't think that these charges actually meet the the criteria for the for the various charges, and we can discuss each case if you want. Sure. Um, I, I, as far as inappropriate, mm -hmm. sure. I think tons of inappropriate stuff. I mean, I, I it, inappropriate. Seems the reason why I don't not, like the word inappropriate though is because then conservatives are very quick to say, well, sure, he was inappropriate, but everybody was inappropriate. I mean, I'll, I'll concede that he's more inappropriate than others. I, I just okay. don't see the most that inappropriate. As, sure. Okay. I mean, that's like, important to me though. Does it not bother you that like Donald Trump? sought through legal and extra legal and and Trump magical ways of trying to entrench his power as president past when he should have been able to? Is that not something that is incredibly troublesome? I mean, the question to me is the bigger question that I think the Democrats are trying to promote in this election cycle, which is this means he is a threat to democracy sufficient that if he were to win the election, there would not be another. Is like that he is not, such but, a, is he, but he and my tried to do to that last is, time. Could he not try to next time? And, I mean, he could try to do whatever he wants, presumably, and he would fail the same way that he did last time. Why do we think that? Because he failed. Because so because there's a riot it and within succeed. three hours. Yes. Like, let's say hypothetically, Lord, save me. Uh, <laughs> let's say hypothetically, Giuliani was the next um, head of the Department of Justice. Giuliani was the next attorney how, general. How would he be confirmed? <clears throat> um, I, well, I, I, I'm not entirely sure if... Uh, because so much of the Republican Party, despite feeling like they don't support Trump when it comes time to actually back him in Congress. Also, I'd have to check um, whether he would be barred by criminal conviction from holding. I, I don't know the answer to that. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're this, especially with the 14th Amendment, we're figuring out a lot right. of this right now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, say, if not Giuliani, say if there are any other number of insane people that Trump could theoretically put on his side of the government that wouldn't tell him no last uh, next time, because there were a lot of people that rebuked him. There were Republicans in, in a lot of the states, right? Raffensperger is one of them. Um, there were Republicans in his own administration. Uh, you've got Rosen. Uh, right. You've got Barr. Um, there was his own vice president. But like, theoretically, next time, and I feel like last time, I'm going in. I'm going to do a little bit of mind reading at macro. Maybe mm -hmm. you agree, maybe disagree. I think that Trump kind of thought, one, I don't think Trump knows much at all about how the government works. I think we probably agree with that. Um, I think Trump probably thought that if he had people that were like at least in his party and kind of camp, that they'll basically do whatever needs to be done to give him what he wants um, and with no respect for process. But now that he sees it, well, that's it's not enough to just have allies. I need people that are fiercely allegiant to me. Would we not be worried that a guy that tried to essentially steal the election for real wouldn't try to pick people that would be more amenable to his plans in the next administration? Why I believe in the checks and balances of American government. I believe they worked on January 6th. So if you're asking me, do I think that Trump has bad intent or could have bad intent with that sort of stuff? Sure. Do I believe that the guardrails held and will continue to hold? Also, sure. So you, so if somebody was running and they blatantly said, like, I um, I don't want to use the fascist word, but if they said, like, I want to be an authoritarian, I'm going to abolish all elections, you would say, sure, he's saying that, but, like, I don't think he can actually do it, so it's okay if he runs for president, you don't care at all as long as you feel like the guardrails are I mean, are I might prevent. prefer other candidates, but I think that also one of the things that you do is that politicians, again, this would be an exceptional circumstance, but mm -hmm. politicians constantly make promises about the things that they are going to do and then don't fulfill, and we tend to take those out in the wash, meaning that, you know, the... 
if I promise that day one, as Donald Trump has pledged to do, that he's going to deport literally every illegal immigrant in the country, do I think he's actually going to do that? I mean, I, I really highly doubt it. He didn't do it last time he was in office. Uh -huh. That's just, there are many examples of this. Do I agree. I, do, I, do, do I think, here's my question. Do you think the guardrails are going to fail to hold? I'm not sure. Uh, really? Yeah, because I think the issue is, is one, um, when it's election time, Republicans are spineless in office. Um, and I don't know how many congressmen would support what he wants just because they want to win re-election or because they think it's inevitable anyway. Well, I mean, I think that one of the one of the things that happened in 2022 is Democrats ran directly on this platform and a bunch of Republicans lost were running on this platform. Literally every secretary of state ran on the Donald Trump, we should deny elections platform lost in every state. Sure, but other Republicans that have been- office is this. Sure, but I mean, like, look at what happened with like uh, Kinzinger, Kinzinger and Cheney, right? Who had, were very like staunchly anti-Trump uh, after J6 uh, for that select committee, right? Kinzinger uh, didn't even run again. And Cheney lost her election by, I think, the widest margin that anybody has ever lost an election ever. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Like all of US <laughs> politics. People who had, were not um, yet born voted against Yeah, yes. I guess it's just, it's a surprising position to me for if we're looking at like principled stances of government, the idea that a man who has, and I think we both agree on this, that Donald Trump's, Donald Trump's only allegiance is to Donald Trump, right? We agree on that. The only thing he cares about is Donald Trump. I don't think it's the only thing he cares about. I think it's certainly the largest thing he it's cares about. It's the largest thing he cares about, right? Sure. So you've got a man who only cares about himself. Welcome to even, politics. I mean, it's, it may be more- But that's not be, even- it, it may be more with Trump, but it's certainly not unique but to Trump. I think that the issue with Trump too, though, is- um, I think he's even a threat to the Republican Party, in which I think I think you would mostly agree with me, maybe not overall, but on every individual point, Trump picks bad candidates. He has no concern for the future of the Republican Party. Like, for instance, I think there is a chance, I don't think it'll happen because of how the polling looks now, but if Trump didn't get the nomination, I think Trump would say, screw it and run as an independent because he thinks he can win or whatever, right? Um, I, I doubt that he would do that, but theoretically, possible. Yeah. I mean, again, uh, Trump has, he was really content to throw Georgia, um, the two runoff elections okay. under the bus because Raffensperger is, didn't support him for I the mean, election. So stuff, it, like. what, what is all this in service of? What's the, what's the generalized argument that you're making? Do you believe, I'll go well, back the, to my yeah, sure, question, do you think that if, if Trump wins, mm -hmm. there will be no more elections? Is that, is that like, what, what, I put don't a percentage know if, on it. What, what percentage do you think that that's a reality? If, that if Donald if Trump, Donald Trump wins, president. I think there is a 100% chance that he will try to prevent the peaceful transfer of power in terms of would can, he succeed? I can guarantee you he will not do that. Why is that? Because he's in a second term and he's no longer eligible and he will believe he won and he will leave. Yeah, but hasn't Donald Trump himself <laughs> joked about running for a third term? That's, that's I think that, that, I think that uh, having a third term. That, what, what has Donald Trump not joked about? I mean, I don't want, okay, <laughs> hold on. Well, if, you want, another, if, if, you want to prevent, if you want to prevent him from creating a revolution, you probably should sure. actually just appoint him president here's and then he can't a, run again. So. Here's another broad argument that I don't like in favor of Trump. And this was brought up <laughs> earlier in terms of like, we talk about like not grading presidents on a curve, but then earlier we said we take Biden to rhetoric. Oh no, I totally grade Trump. No, I 100% grade presidents on a curve. Are you kidding? Oh, okay. I grade pretty much everybody on a well, curve. Then I feel like- I don't treat my seven-year-old the same like, way that I treat my nine-year-old. Sure, but I don't, I don't like that it feels like we're treating Donald Trump like a seven-year-old or a nine-year-old. I think we should treat him like the president of the United States. I don't think having a president that has taken like concrete steps to prevent the transfer of power, which he did with the electorate's sham, which he did with Pence, and which he did with trying to capitalize on the J6 violence. A president that's taken concrete steps towards uh, uh, cooing the government, essentially. I don't know why that guy, we'd say, well, you know, it's Trump, he does Trump things. The guardrails held, i will probably hold next So, time. Like, I mean, let's throw him in. when we say we shouldn't, do you mean that he should be actually barred from office? I'm just talking about support for him. I don't even think Republicans should, should support Trump. You lose your incumbent advantage. The guy's obviously self-destructive. He's destructed the political party itself. Like, um, Do you think she, he should be on the ballot? Um, you think there's a case to be made to remove him from the ballot? I think there's a case to be made, but man, the phrasing for as much as our uh, governmental founding fathers and everybody else, you know, wrote nice amendments and wrote nice in the Constitution, some of the phrasing is very, very, very bleh. And the uh, Section 3, um, the 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 not requiring any type of actual conviction. Um, I don't have a strong feeling on it. I will say I'm very interested in reading the majority opinion from the Supreme Court. I seriously doubt the Supreme Court is going to uphold that states should be able to decide if they leave them off the ballot or not. Um, I think for the political future of the United States, it's probably not healthy that the leading opposition candidate is now going to be barred from the ballot. It's probably not healthy for us. Um, because because then what? You want to talk about threats to democracy? That would be a pretty serious one applied across would, the board, by it, the way. It would be. However, like that threat to democracy was earned by Donald Trump and the conservatives that supported him. I think conservatives made a dangerous gamble when they threw Trump into office. And now like all of the fallout from that is is something that we all as Americans have to deal with. I mean, I, I think that the, the unprecedented legal theory that a state can simply bar somebody from the ballot on the basis of in an informal way, believing that he is quote unquote an insurrectionist uh, is is pretty wild. I mean, that's that, that we is can say it's pretty wild, but there is an amendment in the Constitution, the 14th Amendment that says that if they have engaged in this, 
they shall not be, or you shall, I don't remember the phrasing because it doesn't require conviction, but it's they're, a self-executing, arguably thing. If that, we're getting into constitutional law, I mean, there, there, there are a number of provisions that, that suggest that this is, number one, not self-executing. I mean, minority opinions in the, in the Colorado Supreme Court case are, mm -hmm. are pretty thorough. Uh, the, the number one contention, which is that this is not self-executing uh, because other elements are not self-executing, uh, that ignores subsequent actual law that, that happened. I mean, the, the Congress passed a law, for example, in 1872 defining who was an insurrectionist, who was not an insurrectionist for purposes of elections. Mm -hmm. In 1994, Congress passed a law that specifically defined insurrection as a criminal activity so that somebody could theoretically be convicted of insurrection and therefore ineligible to run for office. It is unlike, say, the, the, the analogs that are used by the majority opinion, like age. Obviously, this is not the same thing. We can all tell what somebody's age is by looking at their birth certificate. I can't tell whether somebody is an insurrectionist without any reference to a legal sure. statute or a definition of the term. I would also be careful with that because remember, one of Trump's first like big political actions was challenging Obama's birth certificate. <laughs> well, I, and, and I thought that was dumb at the time. But sure. in any case, I like that you both said 100% chance that Trump will try to go for third term and 0% chance, which statistically- right, Third term, he's done, man. Are you kidding? <laughs> I, he would want to. Given Trump, the, Trump's going to walk try. around, hands up high. He's going to be like, I'm a two-term president. I'm the only president since Grover Cleveland. He wouldn't know. But, but yeah. he, since Grover Cleveland, who served two non-consecutive terms. I kicked Joe Biden out of office and I kicked Hillary Clinton out of office. Dude would be like, he'd be living large. Are you kidding? He doesn't want the presidency anymore after that. I just think that the, I think it's scary that like Donald Trump, it feels like for all of the accusations that are made sometimes against Democrats, like Biden is ordering uh, Garland to investigate Donald Trump and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it seems like Donald Trump would actually do that with his DOJ, would give them orders. He didn't. Um, he didn't. Well, he, was, he, he, didn't kind of, he kind of did though, right? Um, so for instance, with um, Jeffrey Clark, uh, Jeffrey Clark went to Rosen and Donahue and said, hey, listen, uh, I need you guys to sign off on a letter that we're going to use essentially to bully states into overturning their elections by saying we found significant election fraud. And part of that threat was Jeffrey Clark saying, listen, if you're not going to do it, Rosen, uh, you know, Trump's going to fire you and just make me the uh, acting uh, attorney general. That was the threat that he carried. And I think Trump repeated that threat in a meeting later on that was, I only rebuked when I think like half the White House staff said, if you do this, we're resigning. Okay, so that's a slightly different topic because now you're getting into all the election shenanigans and all this, but- Trump I'm but, saying he but, threatened to fire his acting attorney general if he wouldn't carry the same plot for him, essentially. Like if Trump could order his DOJ to do something, would he? Um, it's not beyond I, I, the pale for him, right? It's not beyond the pale for him to order them to do it. And then it's not beyond the pale for them to reject him doing that, which is the story of his entire administration. Whereas Joe I Biden agree. orders his DOJ to do things and then they just do them. Well, I, I'm not, we can get into the specifics there. Um, I, I just, I, it, this is one of the big problems that I have with, I mean, for example, all the talk about <clears throat> Trump tyrant, Trump executive power. I mean, Joe Biden has used executive power in ways that far outstrip Every anything. Every president Trump. has been stretching and stretching and stretching executive power. I mean, That's Joe, Joe Biden is going like, Joe Biden has gone well beyond anything Trump even remotely attempted to maintain via just pure executive power. And I, actually, Trump's use of executive power is nowhere near even what Obama's was. I Obama mean, Trump's inability to get border policy passed literally had him using executive power to, to march the military down to the border to do border policy. I mean... I mean, Joe Biden literally used the Occupational Safety and Hazard Administration to try to cram down vax mandates on 80 million Americans. That's insane. Sure, he literally why, said, I cannot relieve student loan debt, and then tried to relieve hundreds of billions of dollars. In yeah, but what happened debt. to that? It got struck down by the Supreme Court. And then they still did it. They still did it. Biden brags about it for for for, about having for what he for what he billions. was able to for what he was able to relieve, which I think um, were related to particular types of student loan debt. But I'm just saying that, like, well, the guardrails are holding with Biden as much as they're holding with Trump. The only difference is, is that once Biden, you know, exhausts his executive power, he's not running around like lying to people or trying to extort people or so, trying to and concoct insane schemes. Well, I mean, so I, uh, here, here's the way I would think of this. Think of the guardrails holding as the filter, sure. okay? Meaning like the the coffee is in the filter, some of it's, you know, what, what you want is going to get through and all the stuff, that the guardrails prevent the other stuff from getting through. Mm -hmm. Now the question becomes, what liquid are you pouring into the filter? Okay, meaning, so if, I, if I'm, if, if the filter exists, if the guardrails hold, and if Donald Trump can't steal elections, what's the policy that comes through the other end of the filter? The policy I get from Donald Trump on the other end of the filter is a bunch of stuff that I like. The policy that I get from Joe Biden on the other end of the filter is a bunch of bullshit I don't. So that's the basic calculation. Okay, so, so then the idea is essentially that Donald Trump's rhetoric is insane, but we don't care. Um, Donald Trump would probably try to steal an election if he could, but he probably won't be able to. Um, he's not going to do it again. I told you. you he's not. <laughs> you, don't, you don't think he has any. Why not? Because he won't be eligible to be on the ballot in. I mean, by the way, you want to talk about 14th Amendment? Mm -hmm. That's where the 14th Amendment applies. Okay, that, that's where it actually applies. Meaning you cannot. He is not qualified to be on the ballot in 2028 if he is the president of the United States. States can literally, in self-executing fashion, take mm -hmm. him off the ballot. Just like he's past the age of 35. Once you have been president two times, you're no longer eligible to be president of the United States. 
Why do, then you why actually do you have a strong little yeah, but like, to keep him off the ballot. Why, why, the, why would the 14th Amendment stop him if he thought Vice President Pence could unilaterally decide the outcome of the election? The, when he's not on the ballot? So, so now, now your theory is that he's going to get he's going to get reelected, and then in 2028 he's not even going to be on the ballot, and he's going to direct his new vice president, Kerry Lake, to simply declare him president of the United States when he has not been on a ballot. I don't know what the I don't know what the scheme would be. I think we can kind of like laugh and say there's no scheme we, we could even concoct. But I think Macho that Camacho, like with the machine gun, he's going to walk. I, into I think the... I think the issue though is that like the idea of electing another president that has tried to circumvent the peaceful transfer of power using extra legal means and then pretending like we can't concoct a single scheme that he could try to circumvent um, other legal processes to have a third term or to have a longer term or to uh, install who he wants as the next president. I just when a, when a person has already shown you who they are and with every single person around him agrees with that when every single person that's worked with him, save for the, what, Sidney Powell, uh, Eastman, and Giuliani, which I don't think even, I don't think anybody would want to throw their lot in with those three. Um, it just seems wild to me that we would say like, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and trust this guy with another uh, term of president, but like he can't run for a third term, so it's fine. When there's like 50 million other things And he I'll make you the case that if you want him not to make election trouble, you should elect him president in the next election cycle. And that then that he will be ineligible. That, okay. Well, I find <laughs> that to be a wholly unconvincing <laughs> argument, but okay.